Um, the January 6th committee, the select committee, the House Select Committee, examining January 6th, um, is, is focusing more and more, and I think this is obvious in, in the witnesses they're calling, but they're focusing on a perhaps the most consequential question, and that is, what did the orange vomit say and do as he watched on, I don't know, three or four television screens, the violent assault on the Capitol that he arranged, and he watched it unfold over the course of a couple of hours, while all sorts of people were, were telling him, texting him, he had to say something to stop it. And, of course, he refused until the very last moment, and then it was just bullshit. But that's a key takeaway. What did he say and do, the orange vomit? It's a key takeaway from uh, this news that the select committee has asked this horrible representative, Jim Jordan, this man who allowed the sexual molestation of Ohio State athletes to occur, and, and he knew about it. But the doctor who was team doctor for so many of the sports at Ohio State was a sexual, a serial sexual abuser. And I think Jim Jordan was kind of like uh, Dick Cheney was when uh, Cheney insisted that the torture videos that were taken at Guantanamo be sent to D.C. so Dick Cheney could watch them. For whatever reason, you figured out yourself, true seeker. But I think Jim Jordan had the same attitude about watching this doctor in whatever uh, video uh, representations were made when the doctor molested, sexually molested athletes at uh, Ohio State. Jordan is a creepy son of a bitch to me. He really is just very creepy. But... Um, the select committee now wants Jim Jordan to appear before the committee and testify. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen, right? Um, and the focus on what this creep Jordan knows does provide a, a clearer sense of what the committee is trying to reconstruct about that horrible period on January 6, 2020. And, and how what happened and how it was organized and planned and carried out, how all of that fits into the larger questions being asked about the orange vomit's overall leadership and organization and uh, the carrying out of this coup attempt against the United States. Um, you know, I, re I realize, of course, just like I'm sure you do, that this has to be a slow, tedious process. You have to just very carefully build the case. But I think you and I can jump ahead. I'm sure the committee members have done this also and realize what they're dealing with. They're dealing with a psychopath named Donald Trump, Donald Jesus Trump, who was so sick in the head and is still so sick in the head that he organized this. He, he set this in motion. He is the only person in American history ever to occupy the office of the presidency who sought to overthrow the government, to commit an act of pure, flat-out treason. And you and I both know that this son of a bitch in a different time or place would already have been put up against a wall and shot or hanged, probably hanged, for what he tried to do. We understand that. We know that. But according to the Constitution of the United States, that the orange Obama and his uh, allies would so quickly burn once they took power, um, he has to be afforded certain rights and guarantees and privileges because, after all, maybe nobody is above the law, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, but every person is innocent until proven guilty. Um, if you see somebody shoot a third person in the head and you're watching as the third person's brain splatter out onto the wall and the person who just shot the second person or the third person stands there with the gun in his hand and then lays the gun down on the table and then the police come in and they arrest him. The corpse is over there on the floor 
And they take him to jail and he has his initial hearing and he says, not guilty. Then the state, if it chooses to do so, has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he is guilty. Even though, you know, because you saw it and you are going to be a witness for the prosecution, you know he's guilty as hell. But the process has to be acknowledged. And I guess that's a good thing, huh? So Donald Trump, even though you and I and tens of million of us understand fully that this rancid son of a bitch Trump and his filthy family and his filthy followers were behind this, organized this, set this up with one purpose— to keep the orange vomit in office. And in order to do that, they were willing partners in treason, insurrection, crimes against the country, violation of their oaths of office, and in my humble opinion, should be tried and if found guilty, hanged. Not shot. That's reserved for um, more honorable crimes. But cowards, treasonous scum like Trump and his minions, you don't afford them the firing squad. You hang them by the neck until dead. So, the committee has asked Jim Jordan to appear and testify because he has some information. The focus on what this scum knows Um. The focus by the committee on what this scum knows, it provides a clear sense of what they're trying to reconstruct about that time period. So, as the Washington Post has pointed out, this is high stakes stuff. You know, Jim Jordan is this ranting, frothing, shirt sleeved, what is that bullshit? Ubiquitous presence all over fascist media. He's one of the, uh, uh, Greg Sargent calls him one of the Trumpiest of Republicans. Greg Sargent, he's not a Republican. Oh, gosh. I have to educate all these people, don't I? He's a fascist Christian, Greg, please. Anyway, uh, apparently Jim Jordan was neck deep in the effort to upset the transfer of power, to, to inhibit, to stop the transfer of power peaceful transfer of of power, including reported uh, scheming over how to subvert the core, uh, I'm sorry, how to subvert the count of the presidential electors in Congress. Uh, Jordan is going to turn out, uh, like Josh Hawley and some of these other people, Jordan will turn out to have been one of the key plotters against the United States. I, I, I just hope that there will be follow-through to punish these bastards. I really do. Um, Now, Mr. Jim Jordan has conceded that, yeah, he spoke to Trump at least once on January 6th. Here's what the committee's letter to Jordan says in requesting an interview with him. Here's just one sentence or two sentences. Quote, we understand that you had at least one and possibly multiple communications with President Trump on January 6th. We would like to discuss each such communication with you in detail. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm sure you would like to. I'm sure you also, committee members, would love to have the first ride on the back of a unicorn. But anyway, um, according to uh, reports that are now starting to surface, on December 21st, 2020, Jordan met with Trump loyalists in Congress who developed a scheme for overturning Biden's electors and consequently Biden's presidency and consequently destroying the Constitution of the United States during the January 6th congressional count. That's when all this shit was supposed to go down. On January 5th, Jim Jordan circulated an argument claiming that um, This hapless Mike Pence could simply invalidate Biden's electors 
That was a case also advocated by the orange vomit and his lawyer in that coup memo. It's, it's all in there. And the January 6th committee wants to ask Jordan about these things. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, it just cracks me up to, to think how baby steps this committee has to go and how gingerly media, respectable media, so to speak, has to treat this whole thing. The January 6th committee wants to ask Jordan about these things. It also wants to ask Jordan if he had any communications with Trump loyalists in the so-called war room at the Willard Hotel on January 6th. Uh -huh. Good thing I'm not king of America. Oh, my God. Now, Bob Woodward and Robert Costa of The Post uh, uh, reported in their book that Giuliani, the bat, and the dumpster dweller, Steve Bannon, and others worked from the Willard Hotel to overturn the results in Congress on the day that Trump ordered the attack on the U.S. Capitol. So, at a minimum, Greg Sargent suggests that Jim Jordan can shed light on the true nature of the effort to overturn the election in Congress. Hmm? So, one of the key questions now that the committee has, obviously, is this. To what degree did participants fully intend for fake claims of voter fraud to be fabricated as a deliberate pretext for subverting the election results? <sighs> I, 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 get, I get astounded sometimes about what I'm reading. I mean, it just doesn't sound like the United States, does it? It sounds like some other place. You know, election is held and, and the person who is defeated starts screaming that uh, it was a fraudulent uh, election. And, and then there's talk that the military was going to be called out. And then there's talk of this and talk of that. And everything comes to a standstill. I mean, uh, that's what... We've become, we haven't come to a standstill yet, but wait till 2024. Hmm? Hmm? Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com. And never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.